this is the based on the wooden clinker belt boat that we used in the 60s and 70s. As you know, a little bit about myself, I was born in Inchmore Island on the 4th of April 1959 and I lived there until the end of 1963. So we remember living in the thatched house overlooking uh, the, the east side of Inchmore which is based on the east stroke south side of Inchmore Island. Why, why were these 17 foot boats so popular? Now what they actually suit Westmead or, or suit uh, Loch Ree because in, on a rough day the, the waves in Loch Ree can get very close together. Now sometimes the 19 foot boat you get wetter in a 19 foot boat than you will in a, in a 17 foot. Now this, the model of this boat is, is a Quigley boat. It's known as the Quigley boat. It's a 17 foot. It has varied a little bit over the years, but not an awful lot. The majority of fishermen want a 19 foot, but what they're finding out now is when you get on in the years, it's very difficult to use the 19 without two people. So we're trying to make it user friendly. So these things I'm taking off here at the moment are just for keeping the cover from sagging in the middle so that the rain runs off and it doesn't get it doesn't get wet. These were the actual boats available at that time was a wooden clinker built, 17 foot, the same length as this. It was mostly sail and the sail was in a hole here in this seat and it went down to the floor. Uh, on the fl there were wooden floorboards and there was a hole in that board so you had the, your, your, boat, your sail went down there was a piece on the front here, a short piece and the main piece was back here and it was controlled from the land back here basically I get an order for this you have to polish the inside because dust builds up over it uh, over a period of time and before you do your, your work you have to clean this. Now, when I have that cleaned out fully and polished with a wax, we get then our uh, gel coat, which is a liquid. It's, uh, it's gel and you mix it a litre to 20 millilitres and you start painting real quick because if you Doddle, or in, in English, in English words, take take too much time. Uh, you can't gel on top of gel because if you gel on top of gel, it'll crocodile. What crocodile means is, if you see the outside of a crocodile, it'll be all lumps. So basically, you have to get that on as quickly as you can without it going hard. Okay. And then that gives, that gives, what that is in real terms is the colour that's on the outside of your boat here. And that's white for instance, right? There's some other colours that you can get the, the um, boats in. As you can see, everything in here is all dust. So you can get that green boat, a, a, a boat in that colour green in that colour blue and in that colour blue as well and you can also get the inside in a lighter grey we, we uh, take orders to whatever side you want to do to the yeah, customers man. there's the different types of knees you can get oh, yeah, that's cool. there's your different colours which we named there these are your thickness of your seat that's one and a half inch that's one inch and there's your knees that goes on the seats now um, Buoyancy here as well. Um, now, for years and years, that was uh, just air. But I found out in the last number of years that uh, it doesn't have to be leaking. Uh, condensation will build up in there. And you have customers saying, Jude, I have water in my boat. So basically what I've done now in the last five or six years is 
there's a product we can get, it's called closed cell foam. It's, I, I originally got it in Canada and now I buy it through the UK and that uh, it's 98% uh, waterproof so it doesn't allow water to build up in the tanks. Now it's important that when you're selling a boat as you say it's slip resistant because if you said it's non-slip somebody could say oh you sold it to me you said it wouldn't slip but it's slip resistant. Right. These pins used to be timber at one stage but now they're stainless steel. I make them from stainless steel. Cost more money but uh, they're, they're a good job but like when you get this boat you'll have it for years and like this it's it's um, teak so teak performs better uh, with access to the air so basically all you have to do is make sure that it's UV resistant the sun is what cracks it so if you put your preservative on it which is uh, kind of a stain not a stain it's just a, it's a I have it there I bring it in from America at the moment and then this is the breastplate up here this is something it looks good but it's very very difficult to do and it can drive you mad you could do it in 20 minutes or it could take you 20 hours it depends on how it fits because the angles you have to get the angles right and this is our trademark little point which is uh, basically was on the wooden boats for the last 50 or 100 years. So on the old wooden boats it was all timber and if you didn't look after it and paint it every year it'll be rotten in no time. Exactly. The actual screw goes in there and then we dowel it. Yeah. Okay. And then you sand it down. There's the, the whitey because there's no point in having weight. Right, so basically uh, okay, now. Yeah. yeah. You were asking me to get these shapes. These are called knees. Okay. Right? Uh, you, you, you need to get these into shape, right? They come from a 10 by 15 foot by 2 inch uh, piece of teak or whatever hard timber you have. We have, we have templates of the shape so you can, you can see basically what the shape is. So when you get a flat board, you mark your timber like this. There's your shape, and then you router this, it's square on the sides here, so you can go to the router here. These, the actual original uh, wooden 17 foot boat was a sail, a sail boat. And in the 70s, early 70s, late 60s, the first engine that appeared, that's an outboard motor in somebody's lay term language, uh, was a Britannica engine. And that was uh, just a basic motor with, with a flywheel on the top. And how you started it was you coil around the string 
and you pulled it two or three times when it was primed. And uh, my memory from that would be there was no such thing as health and safety that time. If you got a belt on the side of the ear from your dad or from somebody uh, from the rope, you'd be told that you should have mind your own business and you should get keep, keep out of the way. That was the health and safety at that time. So if you got hit once or twice on the side of the ear or on the side of the back, Sorry, <laughs> like that, and I'm making a hole.